Hi, Mel part four. So this is my, um, my video diary with general um, knowledge, the basics of starting airbrushing for beginners. And um, today I want to talk about um, uh, masks or respirators. Uh, of course, uh, whatever we do, um, if you're airbrushing, um, there are going to be particles of paint getting into the air and um, even though I'm going to be only using um, uh, water-based uh, paints, acrylic paints, um, there's still going to be paint uh, droppers getting into the air. Uh, very, very fine, of course. You won't probably even see them, but they will be there and you will be breathing them in. So you will end up eventually, if you, if you end up doing this a lot, with um, your lungs coated with um, acrylic paint, which is, of course, not ideal. And I've just given up smoking. Yay! Um, but, fingers crossed, uh, that'll be fine. And I don't want to replace uh, breathing in um, nicotine <laughs> and then replacing uh, coating my lungs with nicotine with coating my lungs with acrylic paint. So, um, anyway, I looked really uh, deeply into this to make sure, should you, shouldn't you, because if you watch a lot of the videos on the um, internet, nobody wants to be wearing a mask because, of course, you do look a bit, pretty much a pillock. But there are a couple of uh, things out there that you can find, and I did. Anyway, one thing that came across uh, which seemed pretty clear is that these masks, these uh, uh, paper masks that you can buy in your local um, DIY store, um, are, are no good. Um, apart from anything else, uh, you know, you're only supposed to use them once and throw them away. So if you're doing that on a regular basis, it's going to really, really, it's going to add up. And you do have to have, um, you can't just buy any old cheap one, you have to have um, uh, the better, more expensive masks anyway. So it'll add up pretty quickly. So um, it's therefore quite important to uh, to think about um, investing in a in a mask. I think obviously for for starting, if you uh, if you um, you know really don't want to um, be investing in a mask, um, uh, you know you can use the paper ones. You know just to give it a go. Um, there are three. Uh, um, this is for the European standards. Um, three, uh, uh, what do you call them? levels? Um, they're called FFP one, FFP two, and FFP three. Um, and uh, according to the classification, the FFP one uh, will give you eighty percent protection. Um, the two will give you ninety four percent protection, and the three will give you ninety nine percent protection. But I will point out that if you're going to use these, this is this will only be adequate um, if you're doing um, water-based um, airbrushing. If you're using solvents, no matter what you do, you're going to have to get one of these. So this is a proper respirator. Um, you're going to have to uh, spend a bit of money. As you can see here, there's these like plastic canisters that are on uh, both sides of the mask. These detach, that's the actual filter. And it's the kind of filter that you've got here which um, um, determines uh, what, what kind of um, atmosphere you're working in. Obviously you want to make sure you're getting one for spray paints. Um, and uh, this is also um, recommended if you're using um, uh, water-based um, paints. Uh, but for me, I didn't like the idea of having to wear one of those as I'm sure a lot of people don't, but on the other hand, I do want to protect myself. Um, as I'm going to be uh, doing fine detailed work, then um, I'm, I'm worried that these filter things, it's bulky on my face, it's going to get in the way. I'm going to be close up and I'm going to be turning and hitting the... Now, anyway, um, I decided, you know, to see what else was out there. Um, and luckily enough, I uh, found um, an airbrush artist who was uh, um, had discovered uh, one of these. Now, this is actually um, it's, it's a Respro um, mask. This is the Sportster uh, model. Um, and there was an airbrush artist. Um, I, I think they've been air airbrushing for quite some time, but they've been using one of these for a couple of years. Again, they use water-based um, acrylic paints, and uh, they were very happy with it. So I thought um, I contacted the um, the uh, race pro that make these, and uh, and um, I asked them 
by email, you know, would this would this mask be adequate for me if I'm using uh, water-based acrylic paints for um, airbrushing? And they said, uh, yes, it would. So I was quite happy with that and I eventually um, invested in one of these. Now it did cost, um, uh, it cost me about 40 euros for this. Uh, and then um, on, you can see here, you've got uh, the filter inside. These uh, are replaceable. And those um, those are going to cost me, uh, I think, 14 euros for two when I want to um, eventually replace this. But obviously you can keep wearing this mask for quite some time. And these are actually made for um, uh, outdoor sports. So for cyclists, motorcyclists, um, um, people who are in dusty areas or, uh, you know, the city atmosphere and to uh, protect themselves while they're doing their outdoor sports. Um, of course, this... Um, is it's made of neoprene. Um, uh, there's a valves on the side which look really quite spacey and weird. Uh, and of course, when you've got it on, you look like a complete idiot. So here we go. This is me with my mask on. I can talk just fine. Darth Vader jokes done. Okay, been there. <laughs> and uh, but it's a nice tight fit. This. Um, it's, as I said, it's made in Mirapreme. This one, because it, the Sportster, it has kind of like a mesh. I don't think, don't know if you can see that from here. It's got a mesh and um, that, I chose this one because, purely because you can get one without this mesh on. It's called uh, the Techno. And, um, and that one, uh, this is just purely for comfort as far as I'm concerned, if I, uh, if I, if I find that uh, I'm getting too hot. There you go, there's the mesh. And these are the valves here. And as you can see, as I breathe in, they close. Oh. So, there you go, that's my um, fish interpretation for today. Ta da! And um, I have had to put this up, attach it right at the top of my head because otherwise, it is literally, it's supposed to actually go at the back like this. Um, Find it slips down, and as you can see here, immediately it, there's a there's a gap. So the, you know any any uh, particles of paint's going to come in. But luckily, I discovered that if I put it up like this, you can. It will hold it nice and securely. It tightens right underneath my neck. My glasses don't steam up, and um, I'll be able to get really close with my airbrush in, and I'm look like an idiot, but I'll be safe. Brilliant. Now. This comes in two sizes, medium and large. This is a large. I'm not a particularly big person, but um, I obviously need the large. Um, the other thing is, is that um, if you've got a bigger head than mine, you might have trouble attaching the Velcro at the top of your head. And just a little tip, I would specifically use the softer side. Just get another bit of uh, Velcro um, on the softer side, sew it onto there to extend it, and then uh, you should be able to then attach it at the top. Yep. Okay. So this is the respir. This is it's not actually a respirator. This is um, a filter mask. Um, it's called the Race Pro, and this is the Sportster. If you've got any more questions, uh, please feel free to ask. This is actually a FFP1, but um, I've read on the internet uh, that they uh, did the test and they come to about 88% for this mask. So it's not 100%, but it's 88%. Um, I'm quite happy with that um, and that's obviously why they didn't get an FFP2 uh, rating because it had to be 94% to get uh, FFP2. Again, if you're worried at all and you're not sure, then again, then you go down this route and you get one of those. Okay, so please keep safe. Ooh, one thing else I forgot to mention is that um, I also saw somebody said that if you've got long hair and you tie it back in a ponytail, that also helps keep your respiro mask on. So uh, that's uh, that's just another tip. I don't obviously don't have it, and that's why I'm putting mine right up there. Anyway, um, I hope this um, helps. This is the end of um, my um, general information for beginner airbrush artists like myself, and um, hopefully I've given you. Um, uh, lots of tips and tricks that um, that I've spent ages trawling through the internet trying to find and the information that um, was, seemed to be difficult to, to find. 
um, and put it all into this one series of um, videos to help you out. If you still have any questions, please, please ask. But remember, I am a complete novice myself and um, the only thing I know is from the fantastic information that I've found on the internet from the, the much more experienced airbrushes out there. And uh, again, I want to thank them very, very much for all the information and fantastic videos that they make. Absolutely worth watching. You've got to watch those as well. Um, I've only put this out there to give you an overall picture. Uh, if you're just scratching your head like I was, thinking, what do I need? How do I start? Where do I go? Anyway, so there's my starter kit. As I told you, you've got your compressor, you've got your brush, you've got your paints, your cleaner, you've got your air hose. <laughs> you need that. And you've got your airbrush. And um, happy airbrushing. And hopefully the next time you see me, um, we'll be, I'll be starting to actually airbrush doing the actual diary. So you'll watch all my bloopers and uh, hopefully my uh, successes. Hope to see you soon. Take care and uh, good luck.